There's all these theories going on. That is one of the main reasons why you should be prepping, okay? You wanna make sure that you're doing everything possible to be prepared, to be ready. Make sure that you don't get caught with your pants down and you don't have anything for your family to eat or you don't have medicine for them. There's so much that you have control over that you have to make sure that you're taken in consideration that you're the one that is responsible for your family. Now, in some families, the man preps. Like in my family, I do all the prepping, okay? And other families, the woman preps. So it's a it's a 50-50 give, you know? I mean, you know, there's a lot of women out there that do the prepping and everything else. They may be doing canning, you know, if you have a homestead or something like that. You know, the man goes out and he harvests all the food stuff, he brings it in. Well, you gotta start getting that stuff processed and canned. You know, I mean, there's a lot of work that's involved. The same way is you gotta make sure that you're planned and you're ready. You have a playbook to go by, all right? I've talked about having a notepad or a journal or something where you can keep notes and you can keep track of things and everything else it makes your life so much easier. It really does in the long run. You know, it really makes it so much easier when you have some way to track all this stuff that you do already have so that you know when you have enough. But then again, you know, everybody asks, you know, well, what's enough? It's whatever you want to do. It's ever, you know, how much room you have to store this stuff to store food and water and everything else. Water is a big one because it takes up a lot of room. So that's probably one of your, your toughest things as a prepper to store. You know, especially like if you live in an apartment building or if you live in a small, you know, house or you don't have a lot of land and, you know, storing water is probably one of your number one most space taking preps that you're going to do. You can have five gallon buckets and you can take and do all types of your dry goods and everything else and put them in Marlar bags, vacuum seal them, however you want to do it and put it inside your, your five gallon buckets. But the good thing with that is, is they stack. So if you had a spare room, you know, a spare closet, you can stack them up them in there. You can throw a sheet over it if you don't want somebody to see it or whatever else and you're done with it. That's basically what I did. You know, there's a lot of different things that you need to really be paying attention to and staying on track. The biggest thing that I'm preaching here is I want you to stay on track. I don't want people to fall on the wayside with everything that's going on in the world around us, all right? You have to make sure you stay focused, all right? Basically, what you need to do is pretend you're a horse. Now, they put blinders on horses when they have them out in the fields or they're, you know, uh, if they're moving them around or something, they don't want them to get startled, so they'll put blinders on the horse. So the horse only sees what is in front of it. Pretend that you have blinders on. Because in the end, you have to make sure that you're prepared. You have to make sure you have your preps done. Now, I sound like I'm preaching like a broken record here. I just keep skipping right back to the same thing. But it is very important that everybody out there understand the importance of being prepared. Because you never know in a moment's notice what could happen. You could have an earthquake. You could have fires. You could have a flood. You could have a hurricane. We already got a pandemic. What else? You know, there could be civil unrest in your area. I don't know where everybody lives. You know, you could have civil unrest. You could have people looting. You could have, you know, where you don't want to go out and you don't want to do anything. All right. You want to stay out of the mainstream. You don't want to go out there. You don't want to, you know, nothing to do with it. You know, you don't want to get involved. And you don't want to put yourself into a position where it could turn out very bad really quick. You want to make sure that you have a plan. A plan is the most important thing, I think, that anybody can do for an emergency situation. 
you have a plan, you have an evacuation route if you have to leave, you know where you're going to go, you make sure that you have more than one way to get there, you make sure that other people know which routes you're going on, especially your family members. If say you're going to your parents' house or you're going to your grandparents' house, your brother, your sister's house, whoever you're going to see to stay with to get out of harm's way, make sure that they know exactly what your plan is and how you're going to go that route. Make sure that you always have more than one route. A lot of people say, you know, make sure you have two routes. I say you have three routes, all right? You have your most direct route, you have your route that's kind of out of the way a little bit, maybe get you out of some of the traffic or whatever. And then you have the last route is like your back roads and all that kind of stuff. You may be driving on dirt, pavement, you know, whatever, but you can get from point A to point B might just take you a little bit longer. So making sure that you have a plan in place is crucial to any prepper out there as far as I'm concerned. Now there's a lot of people that don't really talk about having plans and everything else, and that's fine. You know, it's all in what you think that you need. If you think you have it all up here, then hey, great. You know, but as you get older, <laughs> you're not gonna remember everything. So to make sure that you have a planned out, say, if you have to leave your home and it's an evacuation type deal, what you need what you have to make sure that you have with you. You know, this way you can check it off as you load it into your vehicles and then you can get the hell out of Dodge. And then you have everything that you need. When the emergency hits and you have very little time to get out of the situation, you're gonna forget stuff. And more than likely, you'll forget some of the most important things. If you're staying in your home, then, you know, you can have a different plan for that. You know, this is what I have in my home. This is how long I anticipate that what I have will last me. You can kind of figure that out. You know, you can sit down and you can do portions and everything else. And yes, it will take time. But once you figure out the portions of say a can of green beans, if you say, you know, corn, whatever else, it's pretty simple to figure out, okay, there's two servings in this can, you know? So say you have four people in your home. So you're gonna need two cans, see what I'm saying? So you'll be able to figure out exactly how long what you have will last by the servings on the back of whatever it is that you are buying and putting into your stockpile. It's very simple. So I just wanted to bring a quick video on Friday. It's Friday, everybody loves Fridays. Unless of course, today is your Monday, in which case, I'm sorry, but Stay focused, people. Keep your eye on the ball. Make sure you have a plan. Make sure you write it down. It's very important. It's very important to have a plan, especially to all your new preppers out there. A plan is key to survival and a quick emergency situation. You're not running around. You know exactly what you gotta do. You know exactly what you gotta pack. You know exactly what has to go in the car if you're leaving your area and you know exactly how you're going to get to where you're going. 